So today I am at the John Lafitte National Historic Park. Uh, uh, there's the the Cal Calmat uh, battlefield is here. Uh, so I'm going to kind of walk around a little bit and take a look. And I invite you along. Okay, so this is the Regrius Canal. Uh, a lot of it was dug out uh, to be used uh, for the rampart uh, that was used uh, for defensive purposes during the battle. So we're going to just walk back up towards the rampart. Um, there is this uh, really nice house back here. I talked to a ranger. Uh, that house was not here during the battle. Um, it was actually built after that, um, and it was here before the idea of national parks even came along. Um, so the National Park Service did buy that. Uh, it sits empty right now, um, and it sounds like it needs a lot of uh, TLC to be usable again. So I'm walking up, I'm guessing this is the rampart up here. Um, I don't know, I'm guessing maybe that isn't the rampart up ahead, because uh, I do see a ship moving back there, it looks like. So I'm guessing there's water. We'll know uh, when we get up there. I'm guessing this is more of just a protective dike at this point, uh, with that being the Mississippi River there. There is a walkway over there and a little dock that goes out, so it's take a look. Okay, I'm looking at a couple of maps. I'm starting to get the lay of the land here. Uh, this canal here uh, that we looked at before actually sat right in front of the rampart. So where the sidewalk is here was actually um, almost a 10-foot barrier built of mud and wood from wherever they could find. And then out there in the field is where you would have seen the British advancing. <coughs> and then back on the other side, the, the west side of the Mississippi, there would have been artillery uh, as well. Okay. So this is a, a walking, uh, driving loop. Uh, tour loop, so we're going to do that. We're going to walk around there and kind of take a look at all the little plaques, and then uh, we will go over to uh, the battlefield cemetery and probably just drive through there a little bit. Okay, so the uh, rampart would have gone all the way down uh, through here, and we are going to go on the uh, self guided. Uh, driving tour. Um, I think we're going to walk it. It doesn't look that far. But yeah, you can see a little bit of the rampart that's remaining. Uh, there are gaps in the rampart where uh, artillery was placed. And you can sort of see wheels of those sticking up from here. Uh, when we get around to the other side, we'll see that as well. And all this would have just been battlefield. Um, it said 2,000 British soldiers died or were injured and only 20 Americans. So it was a huge route uh, and also kind of a a rallying point, I guess, for the country that was pretty divided at that time. Um, in the visitor center, they had a couple of videos, uh, kind of walked you through 
the, the battle, um, and it talked about some of the things it did for the country. Okay, we're coming up on the first little marker here. Um, the thing that's striking me as I walk through here is this land is so low and there's so much standing water. Um, and being right next to the Mississippi before that dike, this had to just be a horrible, horrible place to try to march through in any organized manner. That would just make the, the battle even more difficult for the British. Okay, so this is the 93rd uh, oblique, so we can see where the, uh, the Highlanders, the 93rd Highlanders were attacking the line. That would have been this area right to here. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, just down uh, from the last marker is, is the next one here. Frosdenville. So, uh, this is... As I'm walking, you can just see how marshy this land is. It really would be difficult to get anywhere uh, moving through this. And I guess this was actually the, the drier end, uh, with the other end of the rampart being built back into the swamp. Just keep walking here. So looking back over the uh, battlefield, uh, I'm almost the other side now, uh, at least where the pathway goes, and you can see the monument that was built. Um, we'll talk about that when we get over there, uh, but that is a really nice shot. Yeah, I just noticed uh, to my right over there on the other side of that fence, it looks like that is the Battle Cemetery, or the Battlefield Temp Cemetery. Uh, we're going to go to that in a little bit. Um, I couldn't walk over there if I wanted to. There is standing water all along there. Um, so you'll just have to wait till we get over there. Uh, but we are coming up on our next placard. Uh, so let's see what we got here. This is where the British batteries were. Okay. So the rocket battery, the advanced battery, rocket battery there, the forward battery. Oh, we've been sitting over on this side. And of course, they went been pounding uh, the, uh, the ramparts over there. Um, Jackson also had a, a headquarters over there uh, that was, uh, was uh, hit several times according to the video I saw. Um, one of the things that I did see when I was watching the video is that it, it really came down to the British running out of ammunition first. And they didn't have a whole lot of choice other than to uh, face those American cannons. And they really got cut down trying to do that. And I can just see walking across this field uh, and, and trying to overtake a breach the canal and then the ramparts would be nearly impossible. Uh, Jackson really did a, a fantastic job of building fortifications and battle plans. Okay, we are coming up on the next placard and you can see the British flag is flying here. Uh, so we're gonna walk up here. Um, 
I'm guessing this is, again, another British uh, fortification area. Um, if we look off to my right towards the cemetery, uh, there's a gap in the wall, and, and you can see in a little bit. Uh, I was looking at some of these massive trees, and I wonder how old they are, and, and were they here? But there's, there's a sneak peek at the cemetery, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, we're going to come back over to the placard on this, to my left here. and ditches. The, the battle took place on agricultural fields crisscrossed with drainage and irrigation ditches. Oh, that would make it even more difficult to move around. The heaviest part was near the cypress swamp. Uh, a double ditch was there. So right out in this area there was ditches and, and roads uh, for irrigation for the crops. Um, those would have just been additional hurdles to try to get across. Okay, so we will move on. So I just found there is a path um, that goes back to the cemetery. Um, and it does look like it's relatively dry and there's a gate there. Uh, so we're going to go over uneven surface. Understandable. Okay, so we're going to take this little path over here. We got a couple placards here before we go into the cemetery. Wow, look at the size of that tree. Freedmen's Cemetery. The remains of ex-slaves established by the Freemen's Bureau in 1867. Uh, soldiers buried at Calmette. So the original entrance was down by uh, the river. Um, 15,000 individuals buried in the 17.5 acres. Veterans of all major wars and conflicts are interned here. Calmet National Cemetery was established in 1864 as a burial place for Union soldiers who died in the Gulf area during the Civil War. It also served as a site for reburial of soldiers from battlefield cemeteries in the region. This was all part of the uh, battlefield during the Battle of New Orleans. There are only four veterans of the War of 1812 buried here. And none of the British. Interesting. Okay, so we are going to uh, venture into the cemetery.
interesting, you can tell um, by the type of ma monument, um, what war they served in. I'm uh, going to be relatively quiet uh, during this part of the video. For me, cemeteries are a very solemn place, and I don't want to be disrespectful to those people that were interned here or the, any of their family. I'm not going to walk on the grass to go take a look. It is noticeable, though, how worn some of the stones are. Okay, so that wasn't a visitor center, uh, just a, a house uh, with like kind of a maintenance area for the cemetery. Um, so we're back on the trail. We're back at the placard we, we had just looked at, and we're going to continue down the road. Um, one thing, whenever I'm in an old cemetery like that, I know my family tree goes back a long way to this country. I, I often wonder if I have any relatives uh, in there, if any of my ancestors are there. Because, um, you know, a lot of those records are, are never kept through families. Um, but we're going to continue on uh, with the trail, and we'll see you at the next placard. Peckenham Fall. Pakenham was uh, one of the commanders, um, I think the commander. Uh, I believe he had just come here uh, after uh, the Napoleonic Wars, so he was very battle-tested. Um, and uh, he was shot in the leg, and his horse was killed, and when he was trying to mount uh, someone else's horse, uh, he was shot and killed. And behind us, uh, we can see some of the swamp. As I look back in there, I can see um, standing water, and I can see some cranes or those egrets, um, whatever they are. back in there. You can see the white, I guess. So we will just uh, continue on with our tour. You know, as I'm passing over this water, I can see it goes all the way back into the swamp, comes through, comes across. And if you look at the, the land, it, this might have been where one of those ditches were the irrigation ditches. Okay, as I'm turning the corner here, I'm walking up towards those ramparts again. Uh, you can see the cutouts 
uh, for the uh, artillery. way back over there is the monument and the visitor center where I started and the rampart goes all the way down through here and they cut it off here where the path is but I have a feeling it went back into the swamp um, according to the videos I saw inside and I guess this is the side they uh, the British attacked because they thought this would be the weakest side uh, by the swamp, um, but they were wrong, <laughs> plain and simple, they were wrong. So as a soldier, you'd have to cross this big field with bullets and cannonballs coming at you, pass through the drainage, agricultural ditches. And if you were lucky enough to make it this far, and a, a few were, there were a few uh, British that did breach uh, the rampart, um, but by that point it didn't really matter. Uh, you would have to cross the, this canal here and then climb up where you would be facing one of the many American soldiers or Native Americans that were fighting with the Americans here. If you look back, we can see yeah, the rampart goes back around into the swamp. And we're going to continue this around. I see another placard coming up. Battery seven and eight. So early on, uh, the British almost uh, flanked the rampart, the rampart, and got around uh, and captured uh, the American position, but they were unsuccessful. Um, and that's when they extended the rampart all the way into the swamp after that. So it was Lieutenant uh, Samuel Spots, the Artillery Corps, gave the order at Battery 7 to fire the first battle shots. So Battery 7 was shooting uh, 6 and 18 pound cannonballs and 8 had uh, a 9.5 inch howitzer. So this was made up of Choctaw uh, volunteers, uh, Kentucky militia, and U.S. Artillery Corps. This is batteries five and six. Afflicted m many of the British casualties, uh, which makes sense. They're right here towards the heavy end of the battle. Led by Tennessean Major General William Carroll, who succeeded Andrew Jackson as head of the Tennessee militia. going to uh, walk up here. This looks like it was four and five pound balls. So we hit that one. We're going to walk over here and take a look at this one. This one's clearly smaller. It must have been the four or five pound balls. And what a view you would have right here. Um, setting this off and just leveling the field. Okay, 
Okay, we are coming up on the memorial and the last placard. At least I think it's the last placard. Um, <clears throat> we'll take a look once we get up there, but I'm pretty sure the visitor center is, is the next spot after this one. So. Although there are placards all the way around the memorial. Rampart, and we've got some more artillery here. Okay, so this was battery four. So this is with the second free uh, colored battalion, the first free colored battalion, uh, USS Carolina Sailors. Um, that explains the 32-pound uh, uh, naval cannon. Because if we scroll over here, we can can see that. Okay. So now let's move on. Okay. So now we are walking up to the memorial. I believe this commemorates uh, all of the different groups that uh, fought on the American side of this battle. And this is for the U.S. artillery. Mississippi Militia. And the Kentucky Militia. Tennessee Militia. The Choctaw Nation. We do have a placard here that talks about the, uh, the memorial, the Chalmette Monument, uh, constructed, uh, constructed to honor Andrew Jackson and his troops. Infantry, so regular army, and the 44th U.S. Infantry. U.S. Marines. U.S. Navy. Louisiana. 
Indiana militia. Now we're going to go back towards the uh, visitor center up a couple of uh, souvenirs. I also have a couple of questions for the rangers if they can answer them for me. Uh, okay, uh, so I got my usual souvenirs. I got a magnet for the refrigerator at home, and I got a walking stick uh, placard and a water, of course, because I'm pretty parched at this point. <clears throat> I had two questions for the rangers. Um, one was uh, where the British were buried, um, and even though they're not in the cemetery, they were uh, there were only about 300 that actually died of the, the 2,000. The rest were injured. Um, so it wasn't as many as I thought, and they were buried in trenches, uh, just like they were in Europe for the Napoleonic War. Um, other than the high-ranking officers, which probably but did get shipped back to England, um, but the rest of them just went into trenches. Uh, the other question I had was about the uh, <coughs> the free colored uh, regiments, uh, not being mentioned at the memorial, um, but I guess them, as well as the Creole, were all uh, lumped in with the uh, Louisiana uh, militia, so they were there already. Okay. Um, so that's going to complete uh, this tour. Uh, not quite sure what I'm going to do the rest of the day. I'm going to go probably grab some lunch and cool off. Maybe I'll work on editing this video and trying to get this up.